This channel is for immature audiences only. It is not for children, only for childish adults. We might play some video games that kids also like, but we say words like fuck and shit with alarming frequency and make crude, inappropriate, and morbid jokes all the damn time. Level 0 NPCs assumes no responsibility if your idiot spawn watches this and gets traumatized. The hills are alive with the sound of music. I love it so much. Hey, everybody. Yay. Welcome back to this. This madness. This is, yeah, here we are. Back in in the game. I'm kind of glad that we did a second save here mm. uh, because um, the save we did after this one, where we had made absolutely no progress, mm -hmm. um, gave us that oops error <laughs> once again that drops me right back out to the Retro Arch um, like menu. So. What is that? I don't know, but it's like the top save slot. It does not like loading. Oh my goodness. So I might just do some extra saving while <laughs> we're like talking things through in the end of the evening of our recording. But for the moment, at least, didn't lose much progress. So, or any progress, really. Um, we, as far as I can tell, have exhausted all of our conversation options with everybody. So. Yes, I think so. I, I think. think. Um, I'm just going to. I think this is the last guy we talked to, and if and Sam Augustini was the last conversation topic. So if he says, uh, we don't know the gentleman. I don't know. Or did we go him and then? Damn. Uh, I think we were saving the places. We did right. all the people. Yeah, we I think that's what we. Oh. You're right. Yes. We were saving the places for this game. No, we've done the places. We haven't done the Oh, game. okay. Do that. Oh, it's too late. Uh -huh. You get uh -huh. one yeah. and done. That's done. okay. He said something about him having an overinflated yes. eagle. E e eagle. eagle. <laughs> an overinflated eagle. eagle is overinflated. <laughs> Gotta see a veterinarian about that. <laughs> Just an eagle rolling around on the ground. Perfectly spherical. That's, that's kind of what happens after they have Alka-Seltzer, I'm pretty sure. Uh, shall we ask him about the uh, Countess water closet? Gal really no sold that one. See, I, Here we go. I remember that we did one 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 thing and not the other, and I can't remember which was which. Now there, it's a lady who truly supports the arts, real patron, baby. He didn't say that. <laughs> I don't know what he said. That old girl. Old girl. See, yeah. I only read what I'm reading. I I don't read ahead. You know. No, it's good. It's good. Yeah. We Matt has you. none of the words in like a buffer. For you. you know? Yeah. They're not they're not cached in advance. Miss Bo, I find it vaguely offensive. You would even think that I know anyone named Ziggy. You're literally facing one another. You think I know that man? You're one step away <laughs> from slapping distance. Lizards. <laughs> Yeah, you, you are a, uh, a lead up to a punch distance right now. Iguana. In fact, you are, you are the correct distance for a proper slap, because you'd need that much of a stride. A stevedore. I'm afraid I don't discourse with proletarian, I don't know, masses. Ruffians of that stride. Ruffians. Yeah, see, that's all I got. I forgot what? I need to do speed walking. <laughs> Why does he assume that Steve is a ruffian? Well, he's a, he's Steve's a are ruffians. Yeah. He thinks all common people are ruffians, <laughs> and in <laughs> fairness, we are. <laughs> yeah, it's true. Yeah, you sure it's are. Just the, uh, <laughs> the... <laughs> you sure are. Uh, Wolf. He's a real pip, genuine go-getter. That fellow does a jolly good job of guarding the museum. Jolly good. Uh, Damn! Yeah, you don't say. I feel really, like you'd find a lot of people who might disagree. Really into him, eh? Mm. First one. I uh, really haven't much interaction with Miss Delacroix. Well, of course, she is my assistant, so I guess I should correct myself and say I do have intercor- uh, I mean, interaction with her. I don't really know her really well. Really? I'm redlining all over the place. I'm going to lower my mic volume. <laughs> <clears throat> it's 
Sorry. No, it's cool. God it's damn cool. it. I'll even give you a moment so that you don't miss the uh, the text box. No, it's fine. I got a knob. You're good? Oh, I, yeah. I got a knob. You crank that knob? Yeah. Dr. Miklos is one of the most museums, most respected climatologists. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever. Ergonomic <laughs> specialists. <laughs> I never met your father, Miss Bo, but I have a deep respect for the minions who uphold the law. That's great. Those yellow the capsule shaped fellas <laughs> in their blue overalls. <laughs> Little That's guys. My understanding. <laughs> My understanding is, got goggles. Some of them got two eyes. Love their bananas. I've never seen that chap. We made a pact we would never talk about the minions on this channel. <laughs> I don't think we did, but we should. <laughs> We've all, we also made that pact never to keep a pact, though. That's true. I'm not acquainted with that chap. This guy's supposed to be British, and I'm just... It's okay. It's fine. Yeah, it's perfect. It's better. I can picture Christopher Walken calling someone a chap. Oh. He's good enough chap. For law enforcement. Scion. <laughs> <laughs> he's in person, but I think I like Scion He's better. a pylon. I think he said peon. <laughs> yeah, he's a peon. A peon? Oh, did he? Oh. Ah. Uh. I'm just, whatever I can get, that's what I'll say. It's okay. A law enforcement Cylon. <laughs> <laughs> Why? That's me, young lady. <laughs> Dr. Archibald Carrington III. Me, Man young of lady. war. <laughs> Man at arms. I'd really like to, to explain the difference between a ruffian... A peon, and what was the third one? A minion? Yeah, a ruffian, a minion, and a peon. Like Steve the Stevedore, was he not a minion or a peon? He was a ruffian, but he was so nice. <laughs> Ruffians are toughs. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but that's that's definitely describing the the cops, though. Minions are for service. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Peons They're are for service. Yeah. Uh, yeah, but that's uh, Steve the Stevedore. He's providing a service. The cops yeah, but, are, are just legal thugs. Yeah, well, okay, like, that's true That's true today. But back oh, oh, then... Oh. There's oh, a thing where moving. we can we can walk behind them, and then oh, <gasps> we can listen to them. That's another thing we can do. Can we use drop yet? Already? I don't... Yeah. Well, there we go. Oh, my God. There I was, standing on the hillside above the excavation in the Valley of Kings of the faithful Mahmud, describing the dance of the seven veils to me in great detail, when a shout rose up from the workers below us. Sensing an important discovery at hand, since I have a sick sense about these things, I scurried downhill to see that a step had been uncovered in the sand. It turned out to be the entrance to the Temple of Amon Ra. <laughs> I took the trowel from the boss gaffier and cleared the sand away from the rest of the steps myself, revealing the entrance to the temple. The seal of the necropolis was intact on the seal door seal, indicating that the temple had not been disturbed. I knew that fate had brought me to the discovery I'd been seeking for so long. Tireless after my exertion into clearing the staircase, I used a sledgehammer to break through the sealed doorway. Within lay the greatest accomplishment of my considerable career. Hidden within the darkness, untouched for thousands of years, in the isolated temple, isolated temple lay the magnificent dagger of Amun-Ra, the greatest discovery of my entire shit show. Good show. <laughs> Of my Manny entire Pete. shit show. Very impressive, Dr. Carter. So this heist is Ah, oh, fuck. <laughs> <laughs> no, I didn't heist it, you annoying little man. I took it out of the temple and showed it to the workers, who immediately fell upon their faces, all 350 of them, to show respect for my accomplishment. 
That's hard to believe, Dr. Carter. Egyptian workers have proudly worked the archaeological dig for many years. I would not think they'd exaggerate the respect to such an extent. <laughs> but then again, you weren't there, were you, Mr. Najir? Well, no, that's true. <laughs> <laughs> And when was the last time you were in Egypt, Mr. Najir? You seem to have lost some of your accent. I don't know. That's a spot-on Egyptian <laughs> accent. Well, it's been several years. I thought as much. Your discovery was really quite a remarkable achievement. Dr. Carter! Was a remarkable, Dr. Carrington? You mean is a remarkable achievement. There's never been anything like it before. <laughs> Quite so. Correction noted, Doctor. If you will all be excusing me, I see a man I need to speak to. Certainly, Ms. Delacroix. Certainly. Oh, I think we can uh, do it again, though. I think we can listen we, in again. We can, we can. Oh, okay. But there's a thing I want to get out of the way first. Oh, sure. I, I'm Say, sure. Yeah. I, I'm sure all the like uh, like accents uh, in Egypt are all beautiful in their own way. But if everyone there spoke like Edwin, <laughs> I would move there today. <laughs> Men, women, and children. <laughs> yeah, just everyone there talks like Ed, even when they're like telling you off. Like, <laughs> who taught you how to drive? <laughs> <laughs> oh yes, you know. So Luke knows what what um what is up with this game. Yeah. Are you doing a thing? Um, I'll be doing some things. Okay. Yes, but. Uh, oh no! I need another voice. You see a short, elderly woman dressed flamboyantly and you suspect expensively, and sporting a grotesque amount of makeup. In fact, when she speaks, you notice small flecks of base coat chipping off of her jowls and tumbling onto her furred collar. Oh, God. What a word picture. It is a fanatically happy party-goer. Oh, my God. They're all fanatically happy. <laughs> Someone definitely spiked the punch. Mm -hmm. Go away to the gift shop. It is an alcove occupied by a giant urn. The giant urn is occupied by the cremated remains of Ignatz Leyendecker, who financed the construction of the museum. So before I um, go uh, mm -hmm. eavesdropping on every conversation in the world, um, uh, there are just a couple of things I want to look at in the of gift course. shop. Um, yeah. I think the yeah the eavesdropping and talking to people will probably be the next five episodes. <laughs> yeah, there's going to be a lot of it. So, a little uh, bit of action is welcome. See what we got here. Yeah, exactly. It's a replica of the famous bust of Nefertiti. You've always wondered if the paint wore off or if the queen really had white eyes. Oh. These appear to be copies of ancient Egyptian artifacts. They seem to be nicely crafted. These, uh, same deal. These. Are the voyages uh, of the Star Trek Starship Enterprise. <laughs> That's what I think of. Okay, I'm sorry. some of them I can click. It's the museum's bargain version of the bust of Nefertiti. It doesn't look that bad, except for the huge nose. Hmm. What's wrong with a huge nose? These are replicas of early 12th century Celtic insect trapping pottery. It's just Nefertiti's, but it's got Ed Wynn's nose on it. I was going to say Adam Driver or Adrian Brody. He schnozzes on both of those guys. <laughs> These vessels appear to be replicas of 7th century Welsh condiment pots made for export to Ireland. Mm. Got that already, got that already, got that already. Wow, there's a lot of those. It's the cash register. Hmm. I'm just taking a little breather from that uh Yeah, I, I figured I'd also yeah <laughs> be, be giving Matt a, a, a minute to, to catch his <laughs> breath. 
They appear to be broken pots of some kind, probably authentic artifacts, or maybe someone just dropped them. That looks like a Peruvian-footed vessel. It has a picture of a bat painted on the inside of the bowl. Let's take a look. The bat on the inside Aww. of the bowl is smiling. Happy bat. Precious. They still look <laughs> like broken pots. That's great. Aplon, aplon. Close <laughs> inspection. You see nothing new here. Oh, let me see about Nefertiti again. Must With my magnifying glass. Nefertiti. Some native craftsmen did an excellent job of painting the bust. You can barely make out the signature. It says, painted with pride by Sam the Sham. Hey, that's not an Egyptian name. Oh, boy. Sam the Sham. Somebody was painting outside the lines. Upon hmm. close inspection, you see nothing new here. I love gift shops. Yeah? Oh, they're so great. What's the favorite thing you've bought at a gift shop before? Or do you just love gift shops for perusing but not for buying? Mostly perusing. Uh, it's a painting of the pharaoh Uber Spamaton hunting geese in the springtime with his hounds and his son Nyet. Nyet? Nyet. It's great. Nyet. What a beautiful painting of the Mask of Tutankhamun. You wish you had the money to buy it. I don't know that I would hang just a painting <laughs> of an Egyptian sarcophagus no? in my house. It's great. Yeah, I don't know. Although, um, when I lived in Japan for the first couple of years after coming back for uh, my job, when I briefly taught um, at Nova, the English school... Um, I was living in, it wasn't exactly a dormitory, but it was shared housing with a couple of other teachers. Um, and one of the guys that lived there had lift, heisted, basically, a um, an old uh, slot machine that had a giant Tutankhamun head on the top. Oh my god. And it was just there in the middle of the apartment for like the first two months that I was there. It's fantastic. Did I thought you said he was going to heist, he heisted an old Egyptian pig sticker. <laughs> no but i mean like yeah it, it that's a hell of a thing to walk into mm -hmm. for sort of your first day there it's just like slot machine king tut head um and a uh an, an, an unusual welshman how did you so feel you tasted it <laughs> yeah just took it like i guess it was broken or something like that so uh he just grabbed it and dragged it home with a couple of other buddies after a night drinking apparently Oh wow! So yeah, like it wasn't it was not an elaborately planned heist. It was a drunkenly yeah. improvised one. <laughs> yeah, it's true. It was more, a drunkenly improvised heist, exactly. P possibly more of a caper than a heist. Yeah, there you go. An escapade. An escapade. <laughs> Love it. Uh, all right, let's let's uh, let's let's keep our uh, keep our eyes on the prize here. Um, this case holds beautiful museum replicas. Replicas of museums in the case. Mm. Ooh, lovely. Uh, it's a painting of the fair. Oh, wow. That's an interesting hitbox on that. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, it looks just like the dagger of Amon Ra. Isn't it beautiful? You can't touch the daggers on display in the locked case. So you can see the dagger of Avon Lee. <laughs> Whoa. <laughs> This dagger shows Pittsburgh's high degree of craftsmanship. If you look very carefully, it says made in Pittsburgh. It's beautiful. Amazing. Yeah. Hmm. That dagger seems like it would be hard to use. Mm-hmm. It yeah, probably like the grip is just not really built for, for gripping. For Unless big I hands. guess you could like Yeah. Like two or, like, two fingers know, on either fingers side of the crescent there. Are, yeah, on either side of this, like two fingers here, two fingers here, and you're, like your thumb here, but you'd still get kind of jabbed in the palm with that one. Not e not not uh, easy to use. <laughs> oh. 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 
The dagger shows a high degree of craftsmanship, but does not have the made in Pittsburgh. Uh-oh. Is that the oh, real dagger? Oh. Did someone stash it in the We're gift done. shop? We're done. We're done. We solved it. You can't touch the daggers on display in the locked case. <laughs> nice job, Luke. Have a clock. <laughs> you win a clock. Oh, here we go. Here we go. Are you ready, Matt? Oh, Jesus. Fräulein, this gift shop is closed. You should not be in here. Oh, I'm sorry. The door was unlocked. Unlocked? My assistant will be disciplined harshly for this mistake. Please rejoin the party now, or I will be forced to injure you. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, dear. Wow. Like, dialing it up to 11, like... (laughs) I, like I'm eject me from the premises first, or something like that. Straight so. to injury. <laughs> yeah. He'll let you stay, though, but, you know. Frantically happy party guy. Alright, t- let's get back to some eavesdropping. You want to talk to that old lady? Should I talk to the old lady? Whoa. Hi, I'm <laughs> Laura Bow, and I'm covering this event for the Tribune Society News Column. She's dead. There's a big Laura-shaped bow hole. Good evening, Miss Bow. I'm the Countess Lavinia Waldorf Colton. Please be sure to spell my name right in your story. Okay, I gotta step out of <laughs> oh, the God. lady water closet. Feeling a little here. uncomfortable with that amount of closeness? Yeah. See, it felt like a little bit too much. Uh, well, let's uh, exhaust every option uh, with the uh, oh, boy. lady water closet. <laughs> Warm up those speaking oh muscles, Julia. <laughs> it's Here my turn comes. to talk to myself. Mm. I haven't had the pleasure of meeting him, but he sounds simply charming. I imagine a man who runs a newspaper must be quite wealthy, hmm? Charming. Charming. I think I should make her older, maybe. We're workshopping it. Go for it. Workshop it, yep. You'll, you'll get there by the time we finish the, the people. Could you add a pack of cigarettes a day for every line of dialogue? Ah, truly a man of great <laughs> ambition and integrity. Mm. <laughs> and then, like, hoarser and huskier on the next one. Need, I think Julie would need hazard pay by the end of the, uh, end of the notebook if we did that. Dr. Carrington? Ah, what about him? I know very little about the man. What? Now that's odd. I could have sworn Mr. Dorian said that you met Dr. Carrington in a taxi when he arrived on the Andridoria. Eh, so what if I did, I mean? I mean, yes, I did meet him that night. Our families are old allies from the time of the War of the Roses. I feel obliged to meet him, him upon his arrival. Nobles oblige, you understand. I don't, but I pretend I will. Mm, it's very classy. You see, she does slip into a cockney, which I could not do, but that's a good narrative note. <laughs> oh, in the VO or the yeah, uh... and also like in the way that they wrote that dialogue too. She goes, "All right, then." Right, right. Mm, yeah. Ah. Detective O'Reilly. Well, to tell you the truth, dear girl, I find him a crude, uncultured ruffian. Oh, she means she also does ruffian. Ooh, ruffian. She, yeah. st- but she's Stevador. got it right. Like, the police are more ruffians than stevedores. <laughs> they have clubs, professionally. And guns. That's true. Oh, I do enjoy a bit of crowd follow with my tea. <laughs> no fact. I'm sure I've never met him, Miss Bow. I would be interested in hearing your Cockney accent, but, um, <laughs> I don't know. If... I, I, I won't foist it upon you. Well, I mean, you now mean... she's back to being like all cultured and stuff. But I'll you try know what again mean? when it happens. You, no, you, no, I mean. you know what I mean? You know what I mean? It's a yeah. beautiful day <laughs> in the neighborhood. I can't do it. You, we'll figure it out. You got to get it down in two syllables flat. <laughs> no, I mean. Jermaine? Jermaine? <laughs> I've never met your father, dear girl. He's a policeman, you say? How delightful. I didn't say he's a policeman. Wasn't he a journalist? Oh. She, maybe she. Do, everyone knows him. Maybe you're... Are you my mom? 
John Bo's deep <laughs> undercover. We don't know that he's a policeman. <laughs> My, she is unusual, isn't she, dear girl? I can't stand that horrid ferret of hers. I'm sure it hates me. Who has a ferret? Olympia. I don't know what Olympia, I'm going to do with okay. Olympia. So hopefully we're not going to meet her for a while. <laughs> uh, I'm not interested in discussing that little trollop. Whoa. Wow. That's, uh, that's judgmental. You're Wolfe. Wolfe! Oh, Mr. Heimlich is simply dreadful. I think his tiny taste of authority has gone to his little head, don't you, Miss Bo? No comment. <laughs> yeah. She just stares at him. That's kind of vanished after. Either that or he's just hanging out in the, uh... In the, in the gift shop? Gift shop after we've, yeah. Licking all the him. daggers. He seems to like Licking his job, that's nice to see. <laughs> what a lovely boy! He has such charming manners, and he's so handsome, hmm? I think it's Laura slow jimming back into cake or something. <laughs> <laughs> too much socialization for her. Midnight's approaching. <laughs> he seems a perfectly dreadful little fellow. Let's not discuss him. Okay, so that feels like an appropriate reaction to Ziggy. Mm. I've, I've never called someone a dreadful little fellow. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you haven't lived until you've called somebody a dreadful little fellow. I, I told a kid to his face he was the Mega Bloks to Humanity's Lego. <laughs> Why, that's me, silly child. Count Lavinia Waldorf Carlton. Wow. What, what did the child do to, uh, <laughs> to deserve to be called the... Duplo to the humanities Lego blocks. Well, more more specifically, oh, sorry, he, to Lego. more specifically, he was a teenager, and I do mm. not remember what he said to make me say that. But he said something, and I just like without looking up from my work, uh, said, "Trixie, you are the Mega Blocks to humanities Lego." Um, <laughs> he was a student of mine. Did that go over particularly well? Did they understand the reference? It got an ooh from the class. <laughs> <laughs> Everyone understood. Oh yes, I, I forgot okay. to say it was in front of his peers. It was this was a public statement that I made about him. <laughs> wow. I'm afraid I haven't read your newspaper, dear girl. I try to avoid the news. I find it distressing. We live in such terrible times. Yes, you are going to avoid things being terrible by uh, yeah. not paying attention. Cake to breathing, news. cake breathing. <laughs> <sighs> well, I suppose they have a job. They have a job to do. I suppose. Jermaine. 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 Oh heavens, my dear! My laundry is done by my maids. <laughs> she seemed very distressed at the question. <laughs> Just the docks are dreadful, rough places, Miss Bo. Simply dreadful. You keep using that word. <sighs> <sighs> Not fondant flaps during the breathing. I too. think the land egg is simply divine, don't you? <sighs> it looks like a TARDIS. Um I'm not sure I'm I'm on board with everybody making cake breathing. Noises, though, so. <laughs> the warm cake breath. You know, uh, New, you Nork. You, New, New York is New charming Nork. as well. It has so much culture for an American city. <laughs> no, I was thrown by charming as well. <laughs> Miss Bo, you must be sure to avoid such dens of iniquity. They can only ruin a young girl's reputation. Flappers and all that, and couches, and y y you know. I, I thought it was quite nice, and I thought the flapper was quite nice. <laughs> yeah. She was real friendly. friendly. Yeah, she was going to give me a massage. 
I was gonna give her a massage. No, she wanted me to massage her and leg. Rub her yeah. leg. Mm -hmm. It's gonna be such a nice time. I undressed in front of her. <laughs> oh, you jot everything down. How very industrious of you. <laughs> mm. Jotting, I do. Mm -hmm. Check out my magnifying glass. It's wise to observe what goes on around here, around you, dear girl. I always do. Oh, I bet. Mm -hmm. Yeah, this lady doesn't disapprove of a snoop. I appreciate that about her. Well, I've seen many glasses tonight, dear girl. It is a party, you know. Yes, but this one is mine. mine. I've taken it, claimed it for all time. We're getting to the big question. Countess, how has 1926 been? Has, has it been a good year, year for you? Yeah, no, no, dear girl, it's been absolutely horrid. My darling husband Sterling this, died this year, you know. I don't know what I'll do without him. I'm terribly sorry to hear that, Countess. No more cake breathing. Well, aren't you the sweet little thing? Thank you, dear. Hmm. She mm. heard of a death and it rejuvenated her briefly. <laughs> <laughs> death? Is it death? Tell me more. I'm into it. What do you make of the theft of the dagger of Amon Ra, Countess? Oh, it's horrid, simply horrid. What sort of creature would make off with a priceless work of art, I wonder? Do you have any ideas uh, about who it might have been? Oh my, no. I try not to associate with dreadful people, my dear girl. We didn't ask if you were associating with them. Oh, we were man. asking if you had any clues. She, she has no idea because she doesn't associate no. with anybody. Mm. Yeah. Well, let's ask her the important mm -hmm. question. This is the big what one. What she feels about Egyptology. The one on everyone's mind. Do you know much about Egyptology, Countess? Only a little, dear girl. I find it quite diverting. I don't know what it means. Quite diverting. What does that mean? Like di like distracting, distracting in a pleasant way. Like baseball is mm. a diversion. I suppose. Gotcha. Um, that can, makes sense. Can we go talk to the guy in the Chewbacca hoodie? <laughs> this this guy. In, yeah. Off duty he Chewbacca. More like a more like a monk on loan from Conquest of the Longbow. But <laughs> please, Miss Bow, you're being rude. Whoa! Wow. Cool it, lady. Can you rude. touch her? Can you, can you touch her? Run your finger along her back? <laughs> oh. Please, my dear, let's keep our hands to ourselves, shall we? Decorum, my dear, decorum is the order of the day. Wow. Did we manhandle all of the other guests? I don't remember. In the, uh... yeah. That'll you bring know, us back. We touched Yvette, I remember that. Oh, yeah, she liked it. We determined that she was DTF. <laughs> <laughs> Contemplating it further, I might have been wrong to single out Adam Driver for having a big nose. I think the problem is that his eyes are very, very high. <laughs> so that there's just about a quarter of a mile between his lower eyelids and his upper lip. And his face just has to do something with that real estate. Like, he would look weird if his nose were any smaller. He's got a, he's got a decent sized nose. It suits his yeah. face. It does. Yeah. I, I, I think it is a problem with the region of... <laughs> His face, like, <laughs> like if you took a normal person's face and gripped it by like the cheekbones and just stretched it out, then you'd get an Adam Driver situation. <laughs> Adam Driver situation does sound like a band name. <laughs> we are the Adam Driver situation, and it's a crapshoot whether La Adam Driver loves it or hates it. Yeah, <laughs> depends on the day. Boy, that is she some dish, ain't she? <laughs> Yes, those French women really have something. I don't think my wife would have ever done it in a mommy cat. <laughs> oh. In my vast experience of women from different lands, I tend to agree with you, Mr. Najir. I balked when a certain French woman suggested we have a deep conversation in the back of a dinosaur, but I was pleasantly surprised by the results. Yowza. Yes, Miss Delacroix certainly is the cat's pajamas, as they say. Yeah, 
We does come up with some good sayings, don't we? <laughs> Quite. Being in profile is not doing Ziggy any favors. <laughs> good lord. I didn't realize what a woman was present. Excuse us, Miss Bo. Oh, I, I wasn't actually listening to your gentleman, Dr. Carrington. I just happened to be standing here. Excuse me. With my hand over my, my ear. ear because it was, <laughs> <laughs> my Ooh. ear was hot. <laughs> oh, we have a switch up now. We have a switch up! Say... Yeah. Ba -bow, ba -bow, ba -bow, ba -bow, switch up! I wonder what these fine fellows and folks have to say to each other. No one knows who Ziggy is, so I don't know what's gonna happen. Yeah. A lot of introductions? Uh, I'm, uh... I'm compelled by the walkthrough that I'm reading to go oh, check a different... Oh, uh, please. Please do. eavesdrop on a different group first, though. Absolutely. They say specifically do it in this order. No, 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 why, no. Why? But you know, absolutely. And Luke's been geased by the walkthrough. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, pretty much. You're making mm. a lot of people very happy, Luke, by doing that. <laughs> oh yeah, by going to the walkthrough. Yeah. <laughs> you see a tall Irish oh. gentleman with red hair who acts like a cop. So what? He shoots people and arrests them, or <laughs> in that order. <laughs> In that order. <laughs> yes. I mean, yeah. You eye this woman with a certain amount of jealousy. Oh, fashionably hygiene. Yeah, fashionably hygiene. That's yeah, right. Yeah. 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 Okay. Okay. You should start by touching them. to eavesdrop. <laughs> start by just manhandling everybody. Do I need to... Do they... Where do I go to... Yeah, do they talk here? Do they talk... I think they... I so. Oh, oh, we're very well done. There you go. Ryan, I'm having the hardest of, of times keeping my hands off you. What's that a bit? What's that a hype? They are not important. You are the most powerful man here, my Ryan. Ryan. What's the matter, Carrot? Take away. That's the place of no trouble, Sam. Carrot? The doctor, he is old and weak. You are the young one and strong. I just wish I was a lot of water at them all. I love when it's not even a good faith oh, attempt. Oh, well, I, I thought I, I heard you call my name. You know so inherit things. We don't have much for your life. Oh, sorry. I, I've got to be going now. Excuse me. There's her. Rude, rudely idler. Oh, Ryan. <laughs> you have a way with words. Oh, look, look. Oh. You see a rotund, ruddy, complexioned man in a fez. Despite his bulk, he moves with dignity oh, and grace. Oh, new voice, Matt. New voice. Here we go. New voice from Matt. What are it old fonts to take? I've been stolen then. Well, let me see. I, I was sleeping in my <laughs> hotel room. <laughs> you don't hold such a hotel I ha I haven't been sleeping too well since I arrived in this country. I'm tired, so I'm not thinking too well. You're not sleeping at well you'd have a guilty conscience or then I do not understand your meaning, Mr O'Reilly. Perhaps it is the English perhaps it is a curious language not as clear as Egyptian. Well you ought to say the daggers would be in this country. If I were in your position, I'd be tempted to steal it myself. Oh, yeah, sure. Steal what has already been stolen. The dagger of Amun Ra belongs to the Egyptian people, Mr. O'Reilly. Not to Dr. Carter, not to this museum, and not to this country. I don't want to know what you're saying, Dr. Smith. You're digging yourself for another hall of wall, but another word, like the leprechauns and the... Amun Ra will seek his own vengeance on those that have... Remove the dagger from Egypt. Amun Ra does not require my help. You say you're sleeping when it's stolen. Were you alone? That, sir, is none of your business. Ah, uh, that's where you're wrong, Mr. Smith. It is my business as long as you're a suspect in the burglary. A suspect? Do you Americans have no shame? I am here to gain the return of the dagger by legal means, asked Dr. Carrington. I'll talk to Dr. Carrington. 
and he tells you your old dice. The matter is not settled until the last camel drinks from the water of the oasis. What is that some kind of Egyptian devil talk? Excuse me, sir, but I see a turkey leg on the buffet that requires my attention. I just go around the museum opening with a big turkey leg like a king. <laughs> <laughs> a severe, conservative, middle-aged woman with an intelligent look in her eye. Ooh. New voice. Uh, I'm going to try to make it sound like the one that's on the actual voice team. Probably. <clears throat> I guess this is uh, Dr. Miklos. We'll 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 uh, come and talk to her later, though. Um, still following following my my marching yes. orders. Yes. Uh, Matt's Irish voices reminded me of a bit. It was one of Matt Berry's shows. I think squeamish about maybe, where he's interviewing someone and her regional accent is so opaque she is both subtitled and dubbed over and is still <laughs> incomprehensible. It's just, it's just, it's Matt Berry reading over everything that she says carefully and clearly with subtitles written below and it's fucking opaque. It's great. That's one of my favorite interview clips. If you want my theory about it, I think it was stolen by an Egyptian. No offense to your people, Mr. Najir, but I think there's a secret sect of Egyptian sun worshippers who have been who have sent an envoy here to steal the dagger. Countess, I hardly think that's likely. Secrets like the you're describing haven't existed in hundreds of years. Oh, really? And what makes you such an authority on secret sects, uh, Mr. Najir? Well, I am only expressing my opinion, madam. I'm certainly not an expert on the subject. Quite so. I think my theory is as good as anyone's darling, and I've heard it from a reliable source. Oh, who was that? <laughs> never mind. Let's just say my source has never been wrong before. Hmm. There's always the first time for everything, Countess. I still find your theory far-fetched! Since you seem to be listening, Miss Bow, what do you think of my theory? What? Oh, I definitely think it's worth considering, Countess. Oh! There, you see, Mr. Najir, the press takes me seriously. Hmm. <laughs> Man, it's hard to say who Laura was making fun of there. <laughs> of course, it is kind of far-fetched. Hmm, well, I never excuse me. Oh, did I say something wrong? I'm sorry. Come back. <laughs> that lady's source is Kepri, the beetle-headed god of the sun. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's how yeah. she knows so much about secret sun-worshipping sects. Never been wrong. So that's the deal, Count. That's the deal. That's the deal. I'd rather not talk about it right now. Yeah. Yeah, no kidding. The world's getting ears around. I certainly just know the uh, reporters, if you know what I mean. If you know what I mean. Yes, now, if you'll excuse me, I simply must speak to Dr. Carrington. Sure thing, Toots. Toots. God. Like, I feel like if you just put a hand on his head and hurled him at the floor, it would make a basketball sound and he would bounce. <laughs> just sort of hollow and rubbery. Uh, Kepri is my favorite Egyptian deity because instead of having a beetle's head, his head is the entire beetle. Like if Anubis, like if Anubis's head was a jackal legs and all. That's you know? awesome. That would be crazy. Uh, and that's what Kepri is. Just a full dung beetle for a head, legs and all. He's a dung beetle centaur. Yeah, he's like a like a like a fucked up chimeric beast in a way that the other <laughs> Egyptian gods are not. Yeah, just just from from the neck up as opposed to from the sort of sternum up. Yeah, the other Egyptian gods are just furries. Just in the, up, the opposite direction as well. It's it's sort of like a hu a, a decapitated human torso, human centipeded with a dung beetle, because it's just a dung beetle's ass kind of plugged into the. Oh. Uh, <laughs> 
uh, human neck hole, you know? It's like a giant one, though, I'm just assuming. Realized... Yeah, I just realized that I described the centaur in the in the wrong direction. So, like, now I'm <laughs> I'm imagining, like, a, a reverse centaur with sort of, like, a human's body up to the sternum and then just a horse chest and legs and head just sort of sticking out. Oh, God. There. Like, or like, like, uh... Like a horse going along, but it has no head. And then there's an upside down headless person. So it has no human head either. It's a human <laughs> body connected at the neck to a horse's head at the neck. Just, just, yeah. Yeah. Just two shoulder down torsos, legs and asses. And yeah, just sort of connected at one common point. Have you guys seen that? It's that, not great. That, that, that like cartoon image of like centaur babies, which are like horses and they're just floppy yeah. <laughs> infants on top. Yes, that's great. Yeah. What is that a far side? I don't remember. Comic, I think. Yeah, I, th I think one of the creatures in um, Gravity Falls was a tortor, which is a it's a it's, it's two horses joined at the neck. So like, <laughs> it's it's like an upside down horse torso with legs as a head of another creature. Wow. It's a fun animation assignment, I'm sure. <laughs> when you think about it, uh, Sleipnir from uh, Viking mythology is kind of a tor tor. Um, it's just a, it's a cent or it's a it's a horse coming out of another horse in the way that a centaur does as a human. You're right. I do wonder if Sleipnir was supposed to be a literal spider. <laughs> it's just an eight, it's like a, like this eight-legged steed. I just wonder if there's a mistranslation and Odin actually rode around on a giant spider. Because that'd be pretty badass. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I, I get behind that. I mean, it would be just fucking terrifying. But I mean, like, Odin is pretty fucking scary on, on a good day, so... Uh yeah, how we uh how we feeling? Do we want to call, uh, call this one? Yeah, yeah, this is fine. We'll call it. I you, yeah. You okay there, Matt? Yeah, no, what? It's fine. I gotta pee. <laughs> okay. Well, hey, you know, uh, episode breaks are when we uh when we go uh, go to pee. So yeah. Um yeah. Thanks for uh, thanks for joining mm -hmm. us, everybody, and uh, we'll catch you in the next episode, where I, we will inevitably start uh, with half of the NPCs missing as they go to the bathroom. Wait, yeah, well, that's we're definitely not, not going to stop recording. We don't know that we don't know that Julie is going to go pee. I might. I, I was I was thinking about it, and I just I always take that opportunity. I tell you, every time I get a chance to pee, I will take it. Yeah, all right, nice. let's do it. It's all right, fine. let's do it. All right, I'm I back. drank so much liquid. I just drank so much. Okay, bye, everybody. Oh, we'll see you in a second. Yeah, okay, bye. You were right. Pee we're break. Back. Stick and stay. Stick and stay. We're back. <laughs> I'm gone. I'm gone. I'm <laughs> better not be. <laughs> <laughs>